morning everyone welcome back to the outpost today what I've got planned is I've got a log on the sawmill I've got three of my purlins cut up and I need three more for the other side if I can get those done they have a tendon on each end then I've got eight little short posts to go up there that I'm gonna have to cut I don't know if I'll get them done today but we'll see um, and then at some point I'm gonna have to crawl up on top because this was an afterthought I had originally planned on cutting three by six uh, beams and putting those up there and putting my tongue and groove on the top but when I got to figuring up the cost you know a lot of this is being done on a budget when I got to figuring up the cost it's gonna cost twice as much to put um, the tongue and groove on the top and then the styrofoam uh, that's glued to the plywood on top of that and then the metal and so forth so I've decided to put the tongue and groove on the bottom so I'm gonna change and use two by sixes put those on two foot centers um, with the aid of the purlin so that will be sufficient and then I will put insulation roll-in type in between my tuba sixes and then put the metal on the top Alright, you've seen me with that hydraulic jack lifting up the other end. I always put the smaller end towards the saw. And the reason I did that, when I first started milling lumber, I really, and you know, I'm not an expert at it, but I had no idea really what I was doing. I have learned some things since then. But um, used to, I would just leave the log lay, and of course one end is bigger than the other. So when you come through there and you cut, you end up cutting out a large wedge. So. I learned later that you take the end of the log and you kind of balance it out where both sides are even and you cut a much straighter plane so you cut less waste um, and it makes the log square on both sides of course if the logs really crooked you're gonna have a big belly where you cut off ends and then when you flip it over you got a big hump where you got to cut it out but if it's not bent too bad if you will level the log out you end up with a lot less waste and a lot more board feet of lumber so that's the reason I was doing that and when you start out you do that one time you make a pass through level your log out flip it over uh, do the same thing on the other side measure it get it level make a pass there now you have a 90 degree angle where both sides are even and you can begin to cut from there every time you turn the log you're laying on a flat surface and you're uh, cutting more board feet and you've got a whole lot less waste so I've already got one side cut I just flipped it I'm fixing to cut this other side and uh, then we'll be able to uh, keep going from there <laughs> You 
you know, I've had a few people ask about the sawmill, so I thought I would take a minute and just talk to you about it. This sawmill, my son and I, we purchased um, this coming July will be two years ago. Um, I have actually been using it a year and a half, pretty much, and um, I am very, very pleased with it. It is a Norwood LM29, which it will cut up to 30 inch in diameter logs. Um, they do make a size larger, they make a size smaller. Um, this one does have a 16 horse motor on it. Um, it does have an electric start on it. The blades, um, I've got one right here I'll show you. Um, these blades right here are the ones that I use. And you can see the teeth right there. Uh, they're not carbide tip, it's just basically uh, metal and they are set and they are sharpened so that when you if I saw wood all day long I pretty much will go through about two of these um, and then I just have to take them down to uh, wherever you have a local place that you can get your uh, saw blade sharpened so I will save up several of these and then I'll take them all in at one time and I'll have them sharpened and set um, but yeah the sawmill it does a really good job um, and the um, railing system that it rides on, you can extend it however far you want to. Uh, you can extend, extend it four feet at a time. This particular one, I can saw 16 foot logs, so my railing is 20 feet long. Uh, that gives the uh, saw room on the back end and the front end to be able to get to each end of the log. Um, but when I bought it, I didn't think, and when I built this shed, I didn't think that I was going to need to cut anything more than 16 feet. Um, if I did have to, I would pretty much have to take out the end of this shed right here and extend it to extend my bunks on out. But um, I did purchase an extra um, log dog, which is this thing right here. I'll show you. This right here, I did purchase this separate uh, with this... Uh, bar that it rides on right here and what it does is it holds the log to keep it from rolling this way and it pushes it against the uh, corner posts over there uh, the side post so it holds the log sturdy as you pass through it I did order one in the beginning but then I realized the longer the log um, you actually needed two of these so I've got one for each end um, I've got this mounted down here where I can roll it in either direction and actually crank and then I've got one down there where I can do the same so all I really need for 16 feet is just two of these. Um, if I remember right two years ago we gave I think it was a total of about $6,300 um, and that was shipping and all to uh, get the mill delivered. I had to drive about 50 miles to pick it up because the truck, uh, they said that they couldn't deliver it out here where I live because it was coming on a tractor trailer. So I went down, picked it up, it was on a pallet um, in about, I think, 15 boxes. So it took us a week to put it together, but it has been well worth it. Now I could have uh, had it delivered and put together, I can't remember, I think they charge another $1,500 or $2,000 in order to do that, but I thought and they say that you know if you put it together yourself you're kind of aware of all of the parts and how they work and so forth and it's starting to rain so I apologize for that background noise um, but yeah it's been well worth it I have cut a lot of lumber uh, a lot of posts a lot of beams um, and it will continue to do so um, you can also get an axle for it uh, where it mounts underneath you can get a tow um, package for the front of it and you can actually pull it behind your vehicle and it will stay just like this. If you've got leveling feet wherever you get to you can level it up and you can mill lumber on site but um, I didn't really need the axle and the wheels uh, right now. I thought that I might purchase them later on because once I get done milling uh, everything, all the lumber that I'm going to use up here, um, I can take it and I can either sell it or I can keep it and like I said put an axle on it take it around to uh, different locations where people might have um, some timber standing where they want to cut it and have it milled up in, in lumber for themselves so I think that 
that runs the last figure that I heard you can get about three to four hundred dollars per thousand feet of board feet of lumber uh, that you cut so it could work out where you could make uh, some decent money on the side if the person already had the logs cut and piled up where all you had to do was pull up roll them over here um, cut them up and then just throw them off to the side so thought about those two options we'll see what happens um, but anyway um, really glad that I got this particular model right here um, I did receive a message from a lady who is in Florida that uh, purchased the same sawmill I guess the um, hurricane that came up the coast had a lot of winds blew inland uh, laid a lot of timber down and they decided to go ahead after uh, none of the local companies there wanted to bother with milling it up or anything they decided to go ahead and purchase one like this and um, they're going to actually salvage as much lumber as they can and build some timber frames on I think they said they had 27 acres um, so yeah I, hey I appreciate you sending me that note that was really nice she said that a lot of the things that we're doing up here were um, really akin to what they're wanting to do with their property so I appreciate any kind of comment like that because it lets me know that something that we're doing up here um, you know might help somebody else but um, anyway that's pretty much the the gist of it it um, it is a push feed uh, you can get the electric where or the chain driven where it will feed itself to me that was just an expense that I really didn't need you know because um, it's not really anything to walk back and forth and push the mill honestly it does push very easy as long as the blades are sharp um, and depending on what kind of lumber you use it is a gasoline engine this right here is the water tank now in the winter time I do have to use a fluid like this because you don't want to put water in there where it will freeze um, but it doesn't use a lot of this if you keep it cranked down a little bit you just need to kind of have a small steady drop stream going through there where it keeps the blade cool and it doesn't uh, get bound up and get hot um, and especially you know pine it has a uh, rosin in there you don't want the blade to get gummy either so you have to have some sort of fluid running and a lot of the folks around here they've told me that if you take and add some dish soap to your water like in the summertime I haven't done any to this but if you will add dish soap it will actually cause the water to break down a little bit more and it does a whole lot better uh, when you're cutting now I do know this that if you've got a puddle of water standing outside you can go and pour a little bit of dish soap in there and it will cause the water to break down even more and it will soak into the ground a lot faster than it will just water standing there by itself so there's a hack um, or there's a tip anyway um, I'm gonna go ahead and crank this thing up and get uh, get back to cutting some lumber I just thought it would take a minute and because I have had some questions on the sawmill and if you've got any more you know feel free to put those down in the comments and I'll try to answer them if I can Anyway, get this fired up and get back to cutting lumber. I don't know if you can tell but right here I've got some bark now this is already seven inches wide and what I'm needing is seven by seven this is actually eight and a half so I'm fixing to cut a uh, two by off of this anyway I've got this bark right here but I've also got bark down here that is uh, more so what I'm fixing to do I'll show you let me turn it you can see this bark right here there's a whole lot more right here so what I'm fixing to do is I'm fixing to flip it right on over again 
and put the short side of the bark on the bottom and the other on the top and I'm going to take my uh, two by from right here that will leave me a much squarer seven by seven on the bottom. I'm not going to use a 2x6, which in this case it's 7. I wouldn't use that on the floor, but you could use it for, say, a rafter because you've got a good end down there, good end down there, and very little bark right here, and you've got a good working surface right here. So, you know, it depends on what you're doing with it. Hey everyone, it's getting kind of late. I'm going to go ahead and pack up everything, but I hope you enjoyed that little video on uh, some explanations of the sawmill and seeing it in operation and also getting ready to uh, cut the little post out for the purlins. Um, normally I don't try to do a whole lot of talking on the videos. I mean, you do have to do some, um, but I've also had some comments and people ask if I wouldn't explain a little bit more in detail on some of the things that I'm doing. Um, I realize that there's probably a lot of people that's not had an opportunity to do, 
you know, maybe as much building as I have, which, you know, like I said, I'm no master at it, but um, I have built some buildings and done a lot of projects in my time. Um, and I basically do it my way. Um, doesn't mean that it is uh, by uh, code or anything like that, but um, I was able to build a former cabin, which I'll try to show you here in this picture. And it did pass inspection and it did sell um, and we sold it to a couple from uh, Florida. Uh, it's when I went through a divorce. There wasn't anything when it went through inspection, wasn't anything wrong with it. So hopefully, you know, some of the stuff that I'm doing up here by explanation will help some people and maybe somebody will glean something and learn something from what I've done. That's, that was our whole purpose and our desire in uh, filming this. And also had a question about whether or not we were going to film the uh, putting on the roof. And I said, absolutely. Uh, the whole project from start to finish. I'm trying to video that and everything else that we're doing here. And I'm hoping that this will be a um, somewhat carpentry, basic carpentry skills, um, do-it-yourself, uh, bushcraft, camping, hiking, and hopefully someday maybe even travel channel. Um, I plan on maybe trying to um, retire maybe within the next year and uh, hopefully then be able to devote full time and and film you know kind of the lifestyle that I have wanted for a long time up here so I'll try not to talk too much but if I'm doing something new then I will try to explain that uh, be sure and reference some of the videos too that I have explained a lot of detail I had some questions about the tractor and I think it was in the third or the fourth video that I ever did that I explained in great detail the tractor and all of the things that I added to it. So be sure and go back and check out a lot of the videos because there will be some explanation in there. And then if you don't find it and if I can answer it, leave me a comment and I'll try to do so. But anyway, we just hope everyone has a great evening. Be sure, don't forget about our giveaways. Take care, be safe, and we look forward to seeing you up here at the Outpost in the future.